Just to start it off, uh, my talk is just an introduction to saying that uh, do we have a lot of people ask this question. I'm the study co-PI with uh, Axel and Sushil. Uh, so uh, we ran the trial, so that is the conflict. The main important thing to understand is that do the strokes still exist or not? So a lot of people say that we are doing this TAVRs, so many TAVRs, we really don't see the stroke. Uh, the problem is that the strokes do happen. So there is about two and a half. This is uh, strokes after TAVR. After SAVR, the strokes are higher. So this is important message also for the patients to know that TAVR is not higher risk than SAVR to do, this, do the procedure. But still, the stroke is not gone for the TAVR. You have a 2.5% uh, stroke risk uh, in any of the studies that you look for uh, in the TAVR group. And if you look at the second generation studies, again, there is a 2.5% uh, major stroke, stroke risk uh, in this patient. And most of these strokes happen early. So this is an important message to understand because there was so, some controversy of, about this in the past, uh, that the stroke happened immediately at the time of procedure or it was delayed and uh, protection may or may not help. Uh, this is our partner analysis that we did uh, and looking at the time variant analysis to say uh, that is there a second peak of stroke or is just the first peak at the time of procedure. And there is no question uh, that it happens. And same data from the Corval, uh, Dr. Kleiman presented, uh, very similar curves to say, and same with the uh, TF or TA axis. And what does stroke mean? Does the stroke uh, is just quality of life? Uh, uh, of course, the quality of life is very critical for these patients, uh, but it is not just that. It is actually mortality. So there is a mortality risk uh, in the patients who have stroke. Uh, and uh, as you can see, compared to the uh, patients who do not have stroke, and this is a very fancy analysis to say uh, that if you have a competing risk of uh, dying, still the stroke uh, leads to an increased mortality. And a very similar curve upside down, but it's very similar to say this is mortality rather than survival. This is from the Corval data. Uh, uh, and again, Kleiman presented this, uh, uh, Kleiman has published this in the same uh, issue of the JAK, uh, where uh, you can again see that the stroke is uh, leading to increased mortality. So stroke does cause increased mortality uh, in these patients. And the strokes come in all different varieties. You know, there are emboli that happen in a large embolus in the brain. Uh, there are multiple small emboli, or there is a small embolus in a very critical spot. All of them lead to uh, a potential clinical uh, stroke. Uh, and even if it does not lead to the clinical strokes, many times it can lead to uh, neurocognitive uh, changes. And you will see this data a little bit more in detail, uh, but I just want to give one highlight of the Sentinel trial uh, to say that did the stroke really decrease or not? Uh, and if you look at the day one, uh, again, Sentinel versus control, day one, day two, day three, and the total in the first three days, 72 hours, there's a big difference, 8.2 versus 3%. So there is no question uh, that protecting the cerebral circulation uh, reduces the chance of having a stroke. So I just want to summarize with this uh, few slides to say that stroke rate risk is still present in the patients undergoing tower. It is not gone. Uh, although the risk is not higher than surgical uh, aortic valve replacement. So you don't want to scare people to say that this is going to be a procedure that is a higher risk uh, than surgery. Uh, but the highest risk happens at the time of procedure. Procedural risk should not be ignored uh, because it not only impairs the quality of life but also increases the risk of mortality. And uh, neuroprotection should be considered in most patients if it is anatomically appropriate uh, because it's very important to understand that we are not able to predict that which are these patients who are going to have stroke. So there is not a specific subgroup of patients uh, that we can say that, okay, aorta is calcified, valve is very tight or something uh, that, or we use one valve versus the other valve because as you will see that 90% of the people, 99% of the people that we use the device, we caught something. So uh, these are the important messages uh, that you will hear uh, in detail uh, during this presentation, during this uh, time. And uh, uh, if we have questions, of course, we have discussion time at the end. Thank you for your attention.